Welcome to Soar Higher with Jason Ballard, a podcast developed for leaders by leaders to inspire you to reach your highest altitude possible by providing proven strategies, resources, and expert advice to accelerate your personal and professional success beyond what you thought was possible. Well, welcome, Jason. How are you today? Doing great, Joel. How are you, man? I'm doing great. I'm really excited to get this show on the road, get started, um, and and uh, and honestly, just launch right in. So uh, let's begin by just talking a little bit about your personal story. Uh, and I guess the best question to start with is, where are you from? Well, thank you, Joel. Um, I'm originally from Central Florida, a little town called Lando Lakes, Florida. And no, they don't make the butter there. It's too hot. There's just a lot of bodies of water with a lot of alligators and snakes in them. Tell us a little bit more about uh, kind of the environment um, and uh, what kind of family you had growing up. Yeah, I grew up in a, uh, out in the country. You know, we, we didn't have any neighbors. We grew up on a ranch. We grew up uh, kind of like on a farm. We had horses okay. and, you know, cows and all kind of, you know, dogs, different kind of animals out there. Even, you know, we lived in Florida, so we even had alligators on on the back part of the property. Wow. And uh, just grew up in a very entrepreneurial family. My dad owned a construction business. I had two other uncles that owned electrical companies. And so kind of screw up real blue collar and, and just got out there and uh, worked our butts off every day, either, you know, at home on the ranch taking care of things or, or out there for, for clients that we were building stuff for. What, were, what did school look like for you? Uh, school was school when you're uh, a wild young little boy that's full of energy. You know, I, I did good at it. I was probably a BC student for the mm-hmm. most part. Um, just never really loved it until, until I got older. I was just too busy. I was too too much energy, too money. You know, I was into sports and, you know, just all kind of stuff all over the place. What uh, what kind of sports did you play? Uh, a, a bunch of different things. Uh, basketball, football, uh, weightlifting, um, baseball. I uh, played quite a few of them. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, going through high school, playing sports, working all the time. Uh, where did you go after high school? So I worked with my dad and his construction company all the way through my teenage years, summers, after school, you name it. At the it started my senior year of high school, my father and my mom divorced. Mm. Um, we kind of came up from some humble beginnings and, um, you know, had a lot of struggles. And, and then, you know, that senior year of high school was a big year because they split up and they went different directions. I ended up staying and living with my dad. My mom went to Georgia uh, with her family and, and uh, reestablishing herself there. And so that was a kind of a pivotal moment where I had to grow up pretty darn quick. And so I I was on a path of being an architect. I was, you know, my dad's business, I would draw all of his architectural drawings. It was kind of side money I do on the weekends and whenever I had some free time and I was pursuing this architectural kind of engineering path. Um, but with, you know, resources not available and things like that, I, I just couldn't go to school, couldn't go to college mm-hmm. and, and maintain all of those things and, and work a full-time job. So, um, I knew some folks that were in the military, some friends of mine I went to school with and, uh, kind of learned a little bit about that. I didn't have a lot of people in the military and my family. So it was kind of a new thing. I didn't know much about it. And, mm. um, Next thing you know, I'm in the United States Air Force. I, I, my goal was to just go in for a couple of years, get the, some educational benefits. Mm-hmm. You know, growing up, even though I enjoyed working in the construction business, I just had a bigger vision for myself. Mm. I just, I didn't know what that was, didn't know where that was or where that was going to lead me, but I just knew deep down inside of my heart and soul there was just a bigger vision, you know, the good Lord was, was going to take me somewhere. I just, just didn't know what that was. And when I went in the air force, my eyes were completely open, small town boy that went nowhere, goes into the military and sees everything he never even thought of oh, I'm sure. <laughs> considering his, his options in the world. And, and, you know, that, that path took me to end up being the first person in my family to ever go to college, ever wow. graduate and get higher level uh, of education. 
and and just took my career in a completely different path. Mm. So from a lot of our conversations, um, I've, I've, I've just kind of come to discover that you are definitely a leader. When along this road did you start to recognize that you, one, had a desire to be a leader, and two, actually had skills and abilities that led towards leadership? Yeah. I didn't know anything about leadership until I went in the military. You know, mm. I always just thought of, of, of being successful or figuring things out in life was just part of just working hard. Get up every day, uh, put your shoes on, get out the door and just go work hard and do, do things the right way, the right, the first time and, and just, you know, treat people well along the way. And, and, you know, magically some success would happen. I didn't know those were some of those key elements of leadership. Well, then I was in the military and I was in Panama City, Florida. The, you know, the great thing about the military, born and raised in Florida, first duty assignment right back to Florida. <laughs> Just a different true. part of Florida I'd never lived before, which which was nice. At that place, I had met a, a gentleman. He was an officer, senior officer. His name was Thomas Glenn. And Joel, at that time, he saw something in me mm. that I never saw in myself, that nobody else saw, or at least brought it to my attention that they saw it. Mm. And he came up to me one day and he said, hey, I want to take you to lunch. Got, a, got some thoughts for you. And I was like, oh, okay, sure, boss, whatever you, whatever you want, you know? And so we later went to lunch and, and we had a really nice conversation. He's like, look, where are you going? Where, what is this career you're trying to create? And I really didn't know. We talked around it and I really didn't know. I was having fun. I was learning. I was going to school. I was progressing in my career, but I really didn't have that kind of clarity. Yeah. And he outlined very clearly what he saw in me. And I would. And what was that? Well, leadership. He's like, I don't know what it is about you, Jason. I just can't put my finger on it, but you're a leader. You just figure things out. You problem solve. You, you, you take complicated, busy stuff of the day and just ratchet that down into very simple what needs to happen to get things accomplished at the end of the day. And, and you do that. And he's like, you know, you're really, really skilled at that. Have you ever thought about being a leader? And I, I didn't even know what that was. Very powerful conversation that would later define define me going in a whole nother direction in my career. And that's great. Uh, I'm really excited to learn and explore what that means in the future. Uh, let's transition to your career after uh, the military. What did uh, business experience look like for you after you got out of the military? Yeah, so I only went into the military for a few years for, for the educational benefits. Ended up staying over 20, become a senior officer, wow. led a lot of organizations all over the world. Just Just very blessed with that. However, the military life can be, you know, tough. Yeah. Um, you're, I was deployed a lot, missed a lot of birthdays and holidays with my family. And we just kind of got to a crossroads in our career in the military. It's, it's, it's time to get out. It's yeah. time, to, time to move on. That later took me to kind of getting into politics and working with some political leaders. Um, ultimately came here to Louisville, Kentucky, worked for uh, Mayor Fisher, and, and helped him run parts of the city here from a technology and innovation uh, standpoint that really just really took the city off in a very positive direction. Very proud of my, you know, work there with the team. Yeah, that's awesome. From there, I connected with some other military veterans that were running companies. Uh, one of them was a consulting company, and we, we really propped that company up and, and took that off in a different direction. But at the same time, we also built a brand new cyber uh, security software company uh, and took that off and up to about 7 million bucks in the first year and a half. And so, you know, that entrepreneurial bug I had as a kid, you know, kind of comes back 
around mm-hmm. uh, after my military career and where I just love business. I love leadership. I love, um, you know, figuring out what's holding people back personally and professionally. Um, and, and so I applied those same things in, in all these other business ventures that I was a part of. And so then I kind of came to another personal crossroads in my life, Joel, where, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? Kind of, kind of yeah. a question. I did some soul searching and like, really, what am I so passionate about? Do I just want to keep being a CEO in other companies and just bounce around and, you know, build companies over and over again? And, and that, that just didn't seem appealing. I had kind of been there and done that. Mm-hmm. What was really appealing to me, and it was really down at the heart and soul level, and that's really the 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 essence of leadership. Mm. And and I live by three leadership principles and, and lead organizations by these same principles. And that is one, leaders motivate and inspire people to do things they never even thought they could do. Absolutely. The second thing is leaders grow new leaders. And the third thing is leaders set people up for success. I love leading. I love coaching and mentoring throughout my entire almost 30 year career. I've always took the time to, you know, lead and mentor people, coach people, help them grow and figure out what success is in their career as well as in the business. And so I decided I didn't, I didn't know what business coaching was. I didn't know what executive coaching really was. I didn't fully understand it. A lot of people don't, but when I figured it out, that's it. That is the perfect crossroads of, of all of my skills, talents, knowledge, and experience that I can bring together and help other people be successful, grow that next generation of leaders and help other people figure out things that, that people help me figure out along the way. So I can kind of turn that over to them and, uh, and, and hopefully, you know, make the world a better place in the process. Absolutely. And I, and I'll attest uh, that I've seen that in you. I mean, only known you for a few months now, but uh, definitely seeing how you just have a passion for passing on what you know to not necessarily even just the next generation, but just anyone wanting to better themselves and grow professionally, personally, things like that. Um, So that brings us to kind of the big why. Why do you want to be on this podcast? Why do you want to share your message with, uh, with the people that will be listening? Yeah, that's very simple. There's a lot of people out there that struggle you know, they may have fears, fears of success, fears of change. Uh, they may have ego. They may have pride. They may be stuck in their careers as an executive or a manager or a leader. They may be a business owner feeling alone on an island and nobody gets them and they have nobody to talk to. Um, everybody in their business or their personal career development, they do run into things. They, they just don't know what to do. And it, it keeps them up at night. They think about it all the time and they just need access to leaders. And there's a lack of leaders out there. There's a lack of leadership out there. Mm-hmm. When I call true, genuine leader of leaders kind of leadership, um, you know, we're kind of witnessing that here uh, in this day and age with the great resignation. You know, that that is centered a, a lot around leadership absolutely, and how to deal with these challenges of, of our world that we live in today. And so I wanted to create this podcast to connect with people that are out there that may not know me, that may not have a mentor or a boss or somebody that cares about them um, is a way, is a channel for them to connect, for them to feel like, wow, this guy gets it. He's humble. He's down to earth. He understands a lot of these things that help people be successful, helps them get out of their own head, get, get out of their own way and, and take a chance, take a risk because man, I'm telling you, Joel, as a guy from small town, nowhere, not even a blinker light at that town in a redneck little town. If I can leave there, And I can have the opportunity to go out in this big world and achieve some of the things that I've been able to achieve with with a lot of, you know, blessings from the good Lord and a lot of good mentors and leaders around me. Anybody can do it. 
And so this is just a passion of mine. I'm like, you know, people just need to know resources, tools, material, things are out there for them. They just got to connect to it. And I hope Soar Hire uh, Business Podcast is an outlet for them. Absolutely. I'm very excited to, to continue on this road with you, Jason, to explore a lot of these topics, to, to learn from you, uh, maybe, um, maybe to teach and to, to listen at the same time, and ultimately just to uh, share with the people that listen to us that, that exactly like you said, success, uh, reaching your, your goals is completely attainable. It just takes, uh, I would assume, some really hard work and uh, the ability to listen to something that maybe you haven't heard before. That's right, Joel. That's That's absolutely right. Wonderful. Thank you for listening to Soar Hire with Jason Ballard. All our social links for LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram will be in the show notes. Please like and subscribe. We're always looking for new ways to interact with our listeners. If you're interested in learning more about Jason and his work as a business and executive coach, please visit SoarHireCoaching.com. Join us next week as we provide more insight on how to overcome the latest business and career challenges people are facing in the workforce today. See you next week.